Hey there, lovely people. Welcome or welcome back to another Writing Tip Tuesday. I'm Sammy and I'm a writer who likes to help other writers become better writers. This week I want to talk to you about foil characters. Now this is a technique that has been used in a lot of different writing spaces, but it's also something that has a confusing definition if you aren't positive on what you are looking to do with a foil character. So if you're not sure why a foil character would be beneficial, what a foil character even is, or how they help a story, that's what this video is for. Where the term comes from is people would take a diamond or a gem of some kind and put foil behind it, like aluminum foil or something like that, behind the jewel before before it's set into the jewelry housing. And that foil would make the gem look better. And that's kind of the association with your foil character is that it is the thing that is going to make your foilable character look better. I also think of it as something that can go both ways. It doesn't necessarily have to be the foil character exclusively helps the other character. It can be a give and take as well. So I also think of it as the math term foil, as in first outer inner last, which is how you multiply two parentheticals together, I think. It's the same but different, but the foil character is basically there just to highlight the other character that they are the foil to. This is usually the main character, however it doesn't always have to be the main character, but to make things easier I'm just going to say main character from here on out. The foil character is designed to spotlight what the main character has and what the main character lacks. A lot of times what the foil character is made up of, what they have in strengths the main character will lack and what the main character lacks the foil will have in strengths, but that's not a law, it's not a requirement for all foil characters. Characters is just something that is commonly noticed in trends of looking at foil characters. There are several ways that you can use a foil character to spotlight your main character, and, and there are several different reasons why you would want to use a foil character. So you can use a foil character to create an environment that your main character interacts with. This can also help to put your main character into perspective for the reader, especially if they are someone who is outside of the norm. So if your main character is a little quirky, for the world, giving them a foil character of someone who is totally normal for the world is super beneficial for having your reader understand what is going on with why your character is different. An example of a foil character acting in this way that I've actually talked about on this channel is Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. Eleanor Oliphant is our main character. We follow through her, we see the world through her perception. And once she interacts with Raymond, we get to see, oh, that that's a little bit weird. I thought it was weird, but it, I thought it was just how the world worked because that's how she sees how the world works, but the world works how I think it works because Raymond thinks the world works how I think the world works. So Raymond's probably right, and Raymond puts us into perspective on how Eleanor's mind works in this situation. This can also be done with just what your character values. If your character values something that other people in the world their foil character, someone close to them doesn't value, that puts us into perspective with what the character's goals are and why they stand out from their world around them. The foil character can also help readers get a deeper understanding of who the main character is, why they are the way they are, where did they come from, what is making them stand out from the other characters around them, what makes them who they are in general. And having a character that stands out from them can be something that shows the reader why we care about the main character rather than, for example, their side character for this particular story. A foil character can also be used to externalize internal events. I haven't seen this super often, so it's a more niche technique of sorts where you have your main character has their internal conflict, the thing that they have been fighting against. and their internal conflict is something that they have to battle, but their foil character is someone who stands directly opposite. Actually, I have just thought of a really good example. In Moana, Moana's internal conflict is that she wants to go to the sea. She wants to be out on the water. She wants to sail. She wants to see the world. That's her internal conflict because that's what she wants, but what she is expected to do is stay on that island and become the chief and stay on the island and stay still and stay where you need to be because that's what we do. And her foil character in that way would be her father because her father doesn't want her 
to leave. He doesn't want her to go to the ocean. He doesn't want her to sail. And he shows exactly who she should be. And when we find out that he also wanted to sail, but the waters almost killed him, and that's why he's so protective of her, we see that it is actually a direct foil because she is where he was when he was younger, and he has gotten to the point where he doesn't see the reason for it. So he is a perfect example of that kind of foil. You can also use a foil character to highlight a what if. So you can have characters that have a similar background, a similar instigation to their story, to where they are in their lives and show what would have happened if maybe this character took path A instead of path B. A really great example of that, I think, is Zuko and Katara. I'm actually wearing my only Zatara shirt. Zuko and Katara have such a strong foil of each other because what one lacks, the other one has. Zuko comes from a home that doesn't have any love, where Katara came from a home that had an abundance of love. And that stemmed them into being in different places, even though the instigation for a lot of their internal conflicts stem from their traumas, and their traumas are almost exactly the same. So having foils of another character, even if it's not your main character, having foils of each other interacting with each other to see how their different paths created different people, and how those different perspectives can interact and create a new perspective. So how do you use a foil character in your story? How do you implement a character that is designed to highlight another character? One of the easier ways is to implement a subplot that is effectively taking the factors of your foil character, things that specifically highlight your main character and turning them into their own underlying story to your main character's story, so we can see them juxtaposed against each other as they both progress. While yes, your main character's story is the primary one, your subplot, your foil character, is going to be there right alongside, and because they are going simultaneously, they will easily do their job by highlighting the main character's story. Your foil characters can also be close side characters. This could be like someone who grew up in the same hometown as the protagonist. A good example of that would be Mercutio from Romeo and Juliet because he is an active foil character to Romeo. He is against love. He is very rationally driven rather than emotionally driven, where Romeo is obviously, he's Romeo. We know all of the things associated with him, but he is obviously significantly more interested in love and emotionally driven and not a very rational thinker. And putting him right next to Mercutio makes it a lot more obvious to see what makes Romeo, Romeo. You can also use your foil character as your antagonist. Your antagonist does not have to be a foil character, and a foil character does not have to be an antagonist. There's so many that are not. It's limiting to think that your antagonist needs to be a direct opposite or something of the likes to your protagonist. It's not required, but if you think of it this way, I saw this in an article, your foil character is to expose the main character where the antagonist is to oppose the main character. So if your antagonist is going to do both, that's a totally fine reason to use a foil character. It's just not the only reason and it's not the only way to set up an antagonist, so I don't want you to feel stuck into that. The, the first example of that that came to my mind just now is quite literally Megamind, because in Megamind we are following what would typically be considered the antagonist of the story, and we see all of the things that the hero guy, who's, it's been a long time since I've seen Megamind, but the hero guy is quite obviously just the antithesis to who Megamind is, and everything that he does highlights who Megamind is through that while still being the antagonist. You can also use a foil character through active juxtaposition, literally just showing people things that are different right next to each other. And this is not an uncommon technique. It was done in The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue with the two men of that story, and they are just back to back with that. And I really loved the multiple different ways of juxtaposition being used in that story, but we definitely see a foil character being done. They are foils of each other because neither of them are the main character. And giving that on both sides of Addie, we have an interaction that is significantly more interesting. But 
we can't always put our finger on why it's more interesting. It's because they are foils of each other. But that is all that I've got for you today on foil characters. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. If you learned anything from this video, I would really appreciate it if you'd leave a like. It'll show YouTube that maybe more people will also learn something from this video. If you don't wanna miss any more content like this, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell next to it and you won't miss any of my uploads. I am here every Tuesday with a writing tip Tuesday and every Saturday with a story study Saturday. And I am always happy to take any questions and see if I can look into them further and give you more detailed answers. So if you have any general writing questions or you wanna see something about a book that you love, leave me a comment and I would be happy to look into it. So I will see you on Saturday for a story study Saturday.